Today we're going to talk about procedural fluency. And you can see from our little picture here that there's stages of learning math facts. There's understanding the concepts, there's memorizing some strategies, and then at the very end, that's when we start developing that automaticity, that quickness with our fluency. We're going to use the Freyer model to help us understand what fr procedural fluency means. So let's take a look at a few students' work and think about whether they have reached that automaticity, that level of procedural fluency. So look at student number one and think about whether you would consider this a fluent student, a student who is fluent with their math facts. Now when I look at this student, I can see that from her work, she understands multiplication. She understands that it is groups of but we see that it has taken her probably quite a while to draw out each of these pictures. She doesn't have that automaticity yet with her facts to be able to use them and do it quickly. She still has to rely on her understanding of the basic concept. Now take a second and look at student number two. Are they fluent? Student number two is using a place value skill by breaking up 19 into its expanded form of 10 plus 9 and then multiplying those by 3 and putting them back together to get the product of 57. This student is showing an understanding of place value and this would be something that they might be able to do quickly or quicker in their head to find out that product. So this student is showing they are on their way to that automaticity, that fluency. Take a look at student number three. Are they fluent? We can see that student number three did not get the right answer. But then when we look at what they did, their thinking, we can see that they weren't even thinking multiplication, they were thinking addition. This is a problem. When our kiddos don't know when to use the strategies we've taught them, then they're not going to be able to use the correct one when we need them to. They are going to be stuck. So this student was stuck with an addition strategy and didn't understand that that addition strategy was not going to work for a multiplication as well. So when we look at our three students, we can see that student number two is the one with the best place value concepts, the best understanding, and is on their way to building that procedural fluency. Student number one understands the concepts, but hasn't gotten to that automaticity yet. Student number three does not have the concepts yet. They would need to build his understanding of multiplication before getting to that fluent level. So when we come back to our Freyer model, we can add an example of a student that would have fluent work and a non-example of a student that understood the concept but isn't there with, its, with the automaticity, the automatic recall. Now I want us to think about building fluency. I'm going to show you two videos and I want you to think if that activity is truly building fluency or not building fluency. We would like everyone to commit their facts to memory and to have recall of three seconds or less per fact. And go. So we do fast facts, daily practice drill, 25 facts, and they have a minute and 15 seconds to complete them. Right. Now, we saw in that video that the students were practicing their multiplication skills. They were doing it quickly in the practice that we call drill and kill. This is not considered something that is going to automatically build fluency. A lot of times teachers fall back on this because this is something we did as we when we were kids. Uh, but research shows that if they don't have the concepts in place, getting to these drills 
is not going to make it any better. They're not automatically going to learn it. Um, in the schools that I go into, that's a big complaint. Well, we do these daily practices, but my kids don't understand. They still can't use the multiplication. That's because they are not making those connections and truly understanding what they're doing. So let's look at another video and think about if this is building fluency. Four times six. I gotta do four rows. One, two, three, four, and then six of them in there. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Four times six. And I did four rows and six circles in it. Twelve, I mean, six plus six equals twelve. And six plus six equals twelve. And twelve plus twelve equals twenty-four. So in that video, we can see that the little girl has an understanding of multiplication. She used an array by having our four rows and six in each row. We also see that she had some automaticity by how quickly she was able to put six and six together to get 12. She saw she had another six and six to get 12, and so she quickly could put those together to make 24. Because she understood the concept, she's getting that quickness. She's getting those concepts in her head and able to connect those ideas. So let's finish out our Freire model. So when we think about procedural fluency, we want the kids to be flexible, we want their answers to be accurate. We don't want them to get it done quick without getting the right answer. And we want it to be efficient. We don't want them to have to sit there and draw 19 circles and three dots in each circle. That's just not something that's as an adult they're going to want to do. We want them to use strategies to solve the problems that are flexible, accurate, and efficient. So procedural fluency supports the understanding of place value. It's going to go hand in hand, help each other out. Students will need manipulatives to understand concepts, but then should be able to transfer that knowledge and answer questions fluently. We want them to use the counters and the arrays and the area models and the groups of models, but we need them to get that transfer also so that they get to the point where they can see those models in their head without actually having to draw them and having that quickness with their answers. It is important for kids to see the relationship between the concept and the procedure. When a kid can sit there with counters and do eight groups of four and get 32, but then the very next day they see eight times four and they have no clue what to do, they don't draw the groups, they don't have a strategy, that's not going to help us out. We need them to understand that when we practice those strategies, those are things we want them to use at later times. We want to emphasize learning with understanding instead of just practicing. We saw the video with them just practicing. If they start practicing it wrong because you could see that the teacher didn't have them check their work, then that now is stuck in their head as the wrong answer. Whereas we saw the little girl who actually understood what she was doing with the array. Without understanding, students are not able to transfer learning to other situations, like I just mentioned with the eight groups of four when they see it on a test or when they're out in the real world and they're needing to multiply and they don't know what to do because they didn't know that they needed to use the array or they didn't know that they could break a number apart in their head and think about it as tens and ones because you did it in one setting and you didn't transfer it to other situations. So we have our drill and kill and we have our building understanding. We definitely don't want to drill and kill them. We do want to build that understanding. Is there a time for them to sit down and work a few problems to see where they are? Yes, we have what we call fluency checks in my district. We want to see where they are. But it shouldn't be a daily thing, especially when they don't understand the concepts. It's just not going to build that procedural fluency.